Can you actually instant cycle an aquarium? What's up? Welcome back to Bob Moss Nano Tanks. Hope you're all having a good one. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button, blah, 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 all that stuff. So can you instant cycle an aquarium? Short answer, yes, but there are some caveats that but is very, very important. So like I just said, there are some certain criteria you have to meet in order to be able to instant cycle your aquarium. You cannot do this if you have new everything. If you just went to the store, picked up your glass, picked up your filter, all that stuff. And even if you bought that instant cycle uh, product, we're gonna get into that in a little bit. Uh, I would not trust uh, an instant cycle. I would go through the normal cycle process, which is a, does take about three to four weeks. You need to create ammonia, then that's gonna create some nitrifying bacteria. The ammonia is gonna convert to nitrite. You're gonna get more nitrifying bacteria and that nitrite is finally gonna convert to nitrate and you are ready, your, your tank is cycled when the ammonia is down there, kind of between zero and 0.25, the nitrite is at zero and you have a nitrate reading. Once you're in there, you just do a water change to get the nitrate to a proper uh, level, you know, below 10 parts per million. So in my, you'll see, I have to do some quite, quite large water changes when I instant cycle, but that's for a little bit later in the video. Educational television! So that's a quick explanation of the normal nitrogen cycle process. The most important thing when you're uh, instant cycling or trying to instant cycle your new aquarium or your aquarium in general, I guess it would have to be a new one to cycle, your new filter even, is to test your levels. Make sure you get one of those API master test kits or whatever brand your country has. Uh, I know some people don't like the API. I personally have no issue with them. I always seem to, well, I get readings that I like at least. Bruh. I'm able to use the API test kits. I have a really old video of me testing water, so you can see that. Maybe I'll link it up here. And as I mentioned, there are some instant cycle products, but that's really just a sales gimmick. They are, I mean, a lot of them, they are uh, bacteria, like some type of nitrifying bacteria that may help in the cycle process. But um, I mean, there's some like, I think it's like top fin that you buy at like PetSmart or whatever. And it's, uh, it's the, the, the it, whatever newbie instant cycle product. I, I don't even know the name of it because it's so stupid. And yeah, if you're buying that, you're just wasting your money. But I know, what is it, Dr. Someone's, I, I can't remember, I didn't write it down. There are some products out there that are tried and tested. People have had good experiences with them, but once again, in my opinion, just test your levels before you go adding any animals in there because you don't you don't want to hurt them. That makes sense to me. So how do you instant cycle your aquarium? The only way that I really trust and and know how to do it, the only way I'm gonna ever recommend to do it is to use an old filter, an already mature filter. You would have seen this in my last two setup videos. I took the filters out of my old 10 gallons, put them into my new 10 gallons, and then that puts in a filter with nitrifying bacteria on it already and then those bacteria colonies are able to reproduce and spread faster onto your hardscape and your substrate wow. and the other surfaces the glass surfaces in your in your aquarium rather than going from from scratch where it takes weeks for those bacteria to develop you're putting a filter in there with those bacteria so while you will you will still get a ammonia spike early on uh, trust it's really the only way to do it you're going to get an ammonia spike and then the bacteria in there is gonna handle it all, convert it to nitrite, convert it to nitrate. And I mean, for me, I waited a week before I tested my levels. And if you watch the last uh, last week's video, that, sh that planted shrimp tank setup video, you would have saw that I added in my green shrimp into my second aquarium here within a week. Same, actually, all three of them. I added, uh, added shrimp into all three of those tanks over there. I'll roll some footage while I, uh, while I ramble. And yeah, that's solely because, well, not solely, but it's mainly because I used a mature filter. Little side note on that, if you're taking a filter out of an old tank, make sure you replace that filter in the old tank, and you should probably do that about a week before you take the uh, old filter out. So you, you, <laughs> You get a new filter for the old tank, you put that in, you wait a week, you take that old, you could even take the new filter out realistically, but if you want to take that old filter out and then 
Yeah, Nailed then it. you're just you're seeding the bacteria into that new sponge and then moving the sponge and does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Yep. So also if you've watched my setup videos, you would have seen I add ram's horn snails into my cycling tanks. Hardy snails like this, ram's horn, white and trumpet snails, bladder snails, pond snails, probably probably just the smaller types of snails. They're going to be able to withstand those very, very high ammonia levels in the first couple of days and they're going to help continue to create ammonia so if you don't get shrimp or fish in there right away, the, the cycle's not gonna crash on you, even if you aren't continuing to add in uh, like Bacter AE or, or fish flakes or whatever, whatever um, product you're using to add ammonia, even if you're just adding raw ammonia, anyway. So more sensitive snails, like your apple snails, mystery snails, and what's that other one? Yeah. Oh yeah, nearite snails. Those those bigger snails, they're a bit more sensitive. You might wanna keep those out of the tank until it's cycled, then pop them in after. So instant cycling is much easier and much more productive and useful if you're just doing a fish tank as you're gonna feed the fish every couple of days anyway, where with our shrimp tanks, crayfish, snails, they're scavengers, they like to eat the the biofilm decaying matter that's in the tank. So those tanks need to technically be a bit more matured oh, and aged yeah. than a fish tank does. So with a fish tank, you could probably take that, that sponge filter, pop it in there. If you test the levels the next day and there's the nitrate reading, you could probably add your fish the next day Realis oh. realistically words are hard with that though you just have to be careful test your levels watch the watch the fish you know i still i still would wait a week Genius. and then another thing with instant cycling and then adding in livestock is if you have plants in there plants in a new tank if they're sensitive like crips or rotala or something like that they they will probably suffer from some melt and the melt can cause nitrate spikes and then uh you may have to do with you know may have to do larger water changes in the beginning just keep an eye on those levels for the first month or so if you're trying the instant cycle process because it's not it's not as perfect and awesome as people like to make it out to be. I'm just letting you know it is possible, but all the difficulties that come with it as well. But now moving on specifically to shrimp tanks. With shrimp, like I mentioned, they are scavengers. They like to eat the biofilm and the algae that naturally grows on our hardscape, on our glass. So adding them in, you know, day two of your instant cycle, they're just gonna starve to death. There's not gonna be enough food in there. So even if you do wait a week, you are probably gonna have to supplementary feed them a little bit more often. If if in your um, matured shrimp tanks, you're feeding every third day, in these tanks you may feed every other, or even every day in the beginning, just small amounts every single day, especially powdered food and Bacter AE to just help, help get that stuff into the water columns that the shrimp, uh, if they have babies, if there are smaller ones, they'll still be able to find some stuff to eat. On top of that, there are some extra things I mentioned in last week's video that you should do if you're trying to instant cycle your shrimp tank compared to a fish tank. Like I mentioned, the fish, they just they just eat fish food, so you, you're gonna you're gonna feed them, right? But shrimp, they need crap to grow in the tank. They need stuff. So what you're gonna do when you do that setup, you put that filter in, overdose Bacter AE immediately, that's going to cause an ammonia spike right away. It's also gonna kickstart the biofilm growth. If you're like me and you're using tap water for your setups, you're going to be adding in Seachem Prime, which is going to one, help kind of make that ammonia safe, but it's also gonna neutralize any uh, heavy metals or anything like that that you add into the water. So wait 48 hours, wait till day three. That's why I wanna wait a week for you to add any livestock wait till day three and then overdose ferts i double dose my fertilizers because there's no shrimp or fish in there it's just snails and plants so you dump in a bunch of fertilizers and that helps to kickstart algae growth and this whole time every single day you're putting in some bacter ae and then from day three on you're you're highly dosing this fertilizer the the ram's horn snails malaysian trumpet snails they don't care at all the plants are going to love it it's going to start growing algae on the hardscape in the glass you're going to get that natural food source for the shrimp and it's only going to take a couple of days you're going to need to leave your lights on 24 7 for this week cycling process no way otherwise like dark periods uh, the stuff's not going to be able to photosynthesize i know yeah trust me just do it <laughs> leave the lights on for seven days Ooh. dose bacter ae a lot every single day Ooh. dose a lot of fertilizers from day three to day seven Ooh. and then on day seven check your levels if you're like me check out this this is from tank one two and three here these are my my tests i did them uh 
on day seven <laughs> after the setups or maybe it was day eight something like that and as you can see ammonia zero nitrates zero and the nitrates are really really high so this is where i'm i had to come in and i had to do like an 80 to 100 percent water change i got out as much water as i could because once again there were no shrimps in there just the snails so i got out a ton of the water ton of the waste and then i replaced it all i waited another day just to to make sure the tanks were all kind of the same temperature and stuff just just to play it safe right and then on that other day is when i started adding shrimp in and i haven't lost one yet and it's been another i mean by the time you see this video it's been two weeks no. i'll i'll put a top comment here or something if i did happen to lose one in this time but this is how i instant cycled my shrimp tanks and it worked i explained it last week very briefly as that tried and true never fail something 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 Maybe we'll do a flashback. My tried and true never fails, always works 60% of the time, every time, method of growing biofilm and algae quickly. All right, so we've instant cycled our shrimp tank. We have shrimp in there after a week. Yay, hooray, that is awesome. But you do have to be careful, as I mentioned at the very start there, watch the feedings. Uh, you may have to feed every single day at the start just to make sure. So I would, when you put them in there, you wait a day for them to kind of get used to the tank, feed them the day after you put them in, see how they react to that food. If every single shrimp in that tank comes to that food, there's probably not enough natural food in that tank. Oh, no. You might want to put in a little bit of powdered food, some pollen or something like that, and you're probably going to want to feed them the next day and the next day until they don't all come to that food. Once you're removing that food after a couple of hours, that's when you can wait a day and, and start going back to a normal feeding schedule. But just in the start, there may not be enough biofilm and algae for your whole shrimp colony, uh, depending on how many you put in there, obviously. In my tanks, for example, my top tank maybe has 10, where the, the green and the blue tanks have like 50 plus. So they have obviously different reactions to the food that I put in them. And this has gone a little bit longer than I originally planned, but let's get into specific shrimp. So if you're doing a Caradina shrimp tank setup, no, you cannot instant cycle it. You that uh, soil that you use, the ADA Amazonia, whatever active substrate that you use, it's going to probably leach ammonia for six to eight weeks. So no matter what you do, you're not going to be able to instant cycle it. Where with the Neo Caradina tank, the substrate's inert. There's no active ammonia source in there besides the livestock. So that's where you can get away with the instant cycles. Neo Caradina, possibly Silhouette fish, crayfish maybe, but definitely not Caradina. Oh, well, maybe tigers. See, it gets really, really iffy. Just relax. Now, if you're getting new shrimp and you have a new tank, like I mentioned very early on in the video, this is not something you want to do. You want to wait the full cycle time, you know, four weeks for inert tanks, uh, six to eight weeks for active substrate caradina tanks. This advice is obviously for people who already have tanks set up that they can uh, cycle or use a, a filter out of. Uh, yeah, and anyway. And also, final note here, if you can add them slowly, if you're moving a colony from one tank to another and you just set up a new tank, kind of like what I did over here, add them slowly, add 10 shrimp the first, or even add one or two shrimp the first day, uh, 10 shrimp the second day, kind of see how they react, make sure, because if you, if you put one shrimp in there, it doesn't like it and it jumps out, well, good thing you didn't just put 50 in there, because that's going to be a pain to re-catch them all and put them back in. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, all right, I think that's it. It's done. Yes, Mr. Frodo. It's over now. Oh, so thank you all so much for watching this one. Like I said, it went a bit longer. I think I rambled a little bit too much there. Sorry about that, but thanks again. Make sure to like the video if you liked it. Uh, that's the thumbs up thing. Hit the other subscribe thing and the bell thing. And leave a comment below with your uh, instant cycling aquarium tips or did I just lie through my teeth for uh, 18 minutes raw footage? Jeez. All right, Patreon shoutouts, Brian Dotson, Michael Redman, Leather Turtle, YouTube channel member shoutouts, Tater Salad, Rival, Poseidon's Pets, Michael Redman, Jamie Anderson, and Mitch Bottoma. Nailed it. If you want your name shouted out in every single video I do, links in the description below. The, the patron and the YouTube channel member links are in the description. I also have Discord fan club 24-7 Twitch stream, my Bob Moss shop with my plants and shrimp, and my Bob Moss hat, wherever that is, and my PayPal donation links all in the description. You can help support the channel and all that stuff. And 
uh, come chat with me in Discord and Twitch. That's all for now. Thanks again. And remember, guys, till next time, keep your shrimp pan strong. Bye bye now. People have had good experience with, with the. Next page. I don't want to move my feet. My feet are in the spot I want to be.